Anyways, it's one nothing lead here for a team who, of course, again, very decisive victory there in that first game. They uh, just uh, – but nothing seemed to really go wrong. They had things every, – everything really clicked. And on the other side of the spectrum, Pee Wee on Dark City was doing all right, but the supporting cast just could not really – uh, do enough there to stick in there early on, and what's done is done. So, quick recap there, but here we are now moving on. Again, joined by Matthew Matical here as my co caster. And howdy. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> we got a uh, new set of bands now. Slight different Ophelia, Warbeast, Midas, and Parasite. Uh, the bands here, so. Magbus was the one band last game that wasn't, and thus first picked by Team Yes. Band. I was hoping they didn't ban Parasite, but I, I was like, they're not going to ban Parasite. <laughs> they banned Ophelia it. instead. No. Yeah. And Moira, Moira. First pick up. <laughs> Moira. Yeah, no, she's the uh, first pick here for her. And again, I can't say I'm too surprised. Uh, become that kind of hero on the scene. You know, another thing I'm just really excited for, as usual, with the, with these big balance patches coming out, is also, again, tournament rule, a couple of heroes being added to tournament rules. Uh, in this case, the the ones that are here, you know, you got your your deadlift. I know there's been a lot of talk about him. Kane is also going to be interesting, I think. Um, and there's a couple others. What is there? Freaking Taro, I think. Yeah, she's not in yet. So. Oh really? Taro's not allowed in. Not yet. Yeah. So in the patch, she will be. So yeah, she is one that has interesting carry potential. That's going to be fun to see if people start using her or not. But. Oh yeah, I think it's it's a lot RNG, so it's going to be a risky pick. But she she puts out more damage than any other hero in the game. I'm pretty sure, like uncontested farm late game, mm -hmm. her crits are massive. Oh yeah, I've had plenty of fun games in mid wars with her. Yeah, ulti added up. Anyways, back to this game though. That's that's a time for another discussion. So as we got uh, Cthulhu fun actually coming out for a team here. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. He's he's another one of those heroes. You don't know where he's going. Jungle, suicide. Uh, not as powerful he as he was once <laughs> upon a time. Good. Uh, but still, he's 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 a hero, and I almost want to say I favor him more than Kraken in that in the sense that they kind of fill the same role. But I like Cthulhu's abilities. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more. I just it's just I'm just a huge fan of him. So it's good to see him in this game. Yeah, and he's obviously a very good counter jungler, too, with that hook and ability. And, again, the most noticeable one is that Parasite matchup. Yep. Yeah, we've seen him in many of times. But, again, not going to be seeing a Parasite here, but still not a reason to not pick him up. He, as you're kind of pointing out, just overall just a pretty good skill set still. And good to use Prisoners, the final pick, by the way, from them as Puppet Master came out for Team Disband. So they're going to run with that dual carry setup once again. Uh, Puppet Master Swift Blade here. Just a very, uh, very comfortable lineup. But again, giving a little bit away in the sense of how they should probably expect to see the lanes here if you're Team Who. Right, a Suicide Swift Blade, right? Yeah. But I don't think he's going to... I mean, that was a fluke. He had so much... I guess the, the pooled regen was a big part of it, but it's rare that you see a Swift Blade have that much success in a Suicide lane. <laughs> and I don't know if they just didn't box him out well enough or, or if he was just playing it exceptionally. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not always the case. And I think that played a big part in why they, they won so dominantly. Yeah, he, again, just being able to pull there initially and all the regen he did have. I, That's it, right, the pull. That pull set up everything. Yeah. It's and it was a risky one. Ball. He had to walk through mid. He almost died to flux. <laughs> yeah. Could have gone completely different. Uh, it could have. It shows you how just important that initial laning phase, especially, really is. So, gotta make sure everything goes your way, and that it did for Team Who once again. Interesting bands here we're seeing. Uh, Behemoth, yeah. Bushwhack, and Clanks for the bands overall from Team Disband. <laughs> the Bushwhack is the one that really is kind of throwing off a little bit, but again, that's one of those I'm sure. Uh, perhaps Jim Carrey you plays it, or has no one to play it, so. They yeah. take away it, but not your everyday carry, though. <laughs> no, not at all. And I was, for a second, I was wondering why they banned Bubbles since there was already a suicide, but he's a hard counter to prisoner, right? So that's yeah. why they probably got rid of him. And then Clink's well, Empath. Even that, though, it's because you figure Magnus would be the mid hero at this point, but I guess he still could be the secondary support with a Bubbles matched up mid. Yeah, that's true. And wants to make sure not to have that luxury, so. There you go, Penny's favorite. <laughs> Always loves to support Pyromancer. 
Yep. I think Swindle's talk, Swindle talked about it once upon a time that Stay Green love to pick support heroes like that because they actually have the ability to uh, output damage yeah. <laughs> later in the game as <laughs> well as support. So. Yeah. Yeah. That and Witch Slayer. <clears throat> Both uh, knowing for those reasons exactly, Z Freak was fantastic with such heroes because uh, just how their, their play style worked and. That's what dust or team disband. I, I said this last time too. I keep wanting to call them Duskbin because it's so close Dustbin. to the Duskbin tag. But team disband is their an actual name. We um, may maybe we see a dual lane pyro mag. I mean that used to be a popular one back in the day. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah, if okay. we see that here, and it's just uh, then again that final pick it will determine. Now there's still a couple of jungle heroes off left that more routine something like that tempest, but. And you got more of your Legionnaire and Solstice and whatnot. So, Keeper's there, but hey, Keeper's a fun one because, again, if we, we know for a fact now he's getting a pretty good rework coming up in that next patch. So, that's going to be fun to see all that. Yes. There you go, Tempest. All right. All right. The so, then, that changes up the lanes a bit, but that's awesome. I can't wait. I mean, I hope Tempest makes his way back into the scene because we rarely see him only in, like, niche push lineups. And I still – he has a place. And he's just he's underutilized as well. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously one of the most entertaining heroes. <laughs> it's one of the most yeah. iconic abilities with the, as I just call it, the big Tempest Ultimate, but Elemental Void is the appropriate term. Um, yeah, he, he's not played as much nowadays. He really isn't. But he, he's still played enough, I think, and I get my fill of it. So I'm, I'm at least somewhat satisfied. But, yeah, he's, it's good to see him always when he has played and played here. Rally is the final pickup in the meantime for Team Who. On their side, yeah. so. So maybe they do stick Cthulhu in the jungle. Oh, wait a minute. It's, that's Yugo on Rally. Hopefully they get the swap off in time. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Like they are, okay. okay. Yep, jungle elephant is what we're going to see here. Can't swap. Maybe he'll make it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what they're saying. So, yeah, should be good. I think they got who they needed to. Yeah. No avatar. Darn it. Remake. Got to get that avatar. I mean, there are, you know, it's not that that's like a big deal, but there's, of course, a lot of players, you know, have their favorite avatars for a couple of reasons. Some feel like the attack animations are just a little smoother or oh, yeah. just more comfortable in a couple of cases there. So others just simply don't care. They just do it for the flair. But there are definitely some that. Uh, flair hype. That's half the battle. You got to <laughs> yeah. look good. Exactly. You got to win. Look good when you get in those smackdowns. This Riley's got some cool avatars. I like the Joan of Arc one. Yeah. And you know, the the Puppet Master has that really cool one that just came out, the 8-bit. Yeah, uh, it's so sick. Yeah, it's Why really is he not cool. playing I, it? That's what I was thinking myself. Like, pew -wee. All of the 8-bits, <laughs> they're all amazing. They're really cool, yeah. The uh, Bubbles, and what was the other one? The Gunblade. Yeah. Well, you don't really see Gunblade, though. Not often seen hero. Man, we ever since we have had Quincy starting to keep track of stats, I'm pretty sure we're down to now like it has to only be like two or three heroes that we've just never seen with uh, that that on record. And there's what like 126 heroes or something like that. It's still like four to five. Okay, I can guess at least. I know I know Hammerstorm's one of them, which I still just do not get. Freaking Hammerstorm Hammer somehow never been played since stat recorded. Yeah, somehow was one of those five heroes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I couldn't really tell you the others off the top of my head, but it's, uh, well, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Maybe with this big balance patch, that'll start changing that up and get interest. Interesting. I would never have guessed that. Oh, there we go. Artillery, Artesia, Forsaken Archer. And again, I'm pretty sure Hammer Shores one, and then maybe one or two others. Okay. Does make sense. Yeah. All right. But, I mean, F.A. used to be played back in the day. Yeah, I know. Forsaken was, like, top-tier carry for sure mm -hmm. for the longest time. But not the case anymore. Not the case here. All right. Uh, in the, as far as the landing phase goes, getting an idea now. Things could be shaping. I'm sure we're kind of rally. Of course, heading towards the bottom. They may be manning up with the jungle here. It looks like they're going to be running an aggressive pseudo trial, in fact, from Team Who. They got prisoner middle. And then, yeah, that'll mean Doctor is going to be short. Solo, of course. What do you think about this idea to go aggressive? Um, I think it'll pay off. I mean, 
it, if they can use it to their advantage and make sure they shut down Swiftblade, that's at least one carry in check, and then uh, then they're really just worried about Puppet. Yeah. You know, I I do you do also look at Team Despan, and we made made point that Cthulhu is considered a counter jungle hero because of that hook him. <clears throat> and so you kind of wonder what Team Despan now. Not that they shouldn't have gone Tempest, but knowing that you're going up against Cthulhu Font, was Tempest the best pickup? Should they have maybe gone a dual support here? But huh, well uh, maybe because at the time they picked up Tempest, Cthulhu Rally wasn't picked up yet, so maybe they they were still banking on maybe Cthulhu Font's going to be in a suicide position. But yeah, it's still it's it was a risky pick and. In hindsight, it's, it's probably going to hurt them. Even though Tempest is a pretty strong or jungler, I mean, when he gets those minions out, it's hard to harass him. But yeah. Cthulhu is so tanky, he'll just get in and out and get the job done. I didn't realize that's what you were talking about. The like Cthulhu fine was going enemy jungle. Yeah. But yeah, that's surely the case here. Yep. Yeah, he's headed in there. He doesn't go... Did he go boots? No, yeah, he just has stats and region and whatnot. But you know, we'll see where he ends up eventually as far as... Over here near this Tempest, maybe, to kind of harass Sam or really just do his own thing early on. Uh, but again, especially with Mora also being down here. So this could be a very difficult start for Pinky Curdy playing on uh, playing on that Tempest here. In fact, we are going to see one blocked camp coming out. Lucky for him, he's starting off at the hard camp. A lot of Tempest players will, will start out in the other one, at the medium camps, and, yeah. and alternate between them. So that's going to work to his advantage, at least. Well, right off the bat, Cthulhu Font will... Hook him the Vagabond leader, and then go from there. So, Papa Master's getting hit hard already down here at bottom. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a very strong comment I think about. Rally Mora. The Shards of Harkon, yeah. you have him compel in, and it's like double stun. X and they're going to go for the dive, yeah. So the, the compel misses, but the Shards of Harkon's still going to hit. And this could still be a kill. One more on deck, he gets it off. But yes. now Mora's in trouble. He needs to aggro the tower, yet yeah, they will. Yeah, very strong combo. And the aggressive lane is definitely paying off already. Yeah. See Shorkon getting credit for it right there. So I was Panny this whole time. Yeah. Was he in mid initially? I yeah, believe was, so. Huh? Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. You know, now team just being they 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 definitely need to do something about that because Pup is gonna get nothing. So they do send Magmus here, or excuse me, Pyromancer. Magmus is, will remain middle though, but yeah, this is not a friendly matchup for him. Um. Prisoner has that shackle, which we'll see through the steam bath. So it's actually Rally at the bottom lane, but here comes Cthulhu Font. Rally's in a lot of trouble. Is going to compel away, though. Will be fine for now. He has a bottle even. And now Parmas is the one in trouble. Trample through the auto attacks coming out. Going to try to eat through the trees. This panty. Can he actually make the escape right here? Beautiful dragon fire's done. But the shards of Harkon come out. And he yeah, still ends nice, up falling. Nice escape attempt, but they're still outnumbered because yeah. of Cthulhu Font. That was a very good try, but just not enough in the end. And you just see how much impact that compels having. And, you know, on who had the bottle? Okay, it's on Mora now. <laughs> I was wondering where the hell it went. But, uh, yeah, so she's going to pick it up. And it. But, yeah, back to the middle matchup. Magmus is going to die. And that's exactly what I was getting at. The Shackle's a huge counter to Magmus. Both the Lava yeah, Surge is. and the Steam Bath are useless. Oh, yeah, this is a bad start. I feel like Magmus, if he started off solo, he might have had a chance in another kill top. They do get pick off on a Dr. Repulsor at least. Yeah. It's Tempest roaming all the way from the jungle to the top lane. And actually, but Puppet Master also once again in trouble. Pee Wee, he's already died. Oh, he dodges. <laughs> Man, how do you miss that trample right there? Literally in the face. Will it even matter? It's not even going to matter. The fact wow. he missed an initial huge trample right there. That's the second death now on Puppet Master. Yeah, Puppet got all tangled up trying to walk through the trees, but <laughs> Cthulhu Font was in there. And this is, I guess, Tempest rotating into the enemy jungle now yeah. because it's just too dangerous for him over there. But without that support, Puppet Master is going to have a real hard time, especially now he's at a disadvantage from the get-go. You know, we've seen a couple of pretty big rally games recently, and this is another one of these heroes that may be underutilized a little bit amongst the competitive scene because his potential is definitely there. And already off to a fantastic start here. Shorkon 2-0-0, 390 gold point. Again, he played the Suicide Swiftly last game and did very well there. Yeah, I like him in the Suicide role. If worse comes to worse and he can't get a lot of farm, he still has a lot of damage potential with his Compel Seismic Slam, so... 
I think he fits the role really well. Middle lane, the hook just gonna miss right there, but clearly Team Despair figured they need to do something, and so they will transition. Puppet Master, yep, in the middle lane, Magmus gonna be at the bottom now. I don't think it's a good idea, though. No. Mm, well, maybe good for Magmus. I don't think Puppet's gonna have an easier time here. Yeah. They're just gonna they're gonna follow up with their own rotation. Probably bring another hero mid, and Puppet Master's probably going to die if Prisoner lands a hook. Oh, yeah. That, that's what it comes down to. If he lands a hook, I mean, whoever he gets, that's probably going to be a dead target. So, Actually, Pyramax is going up pretty far. The closer you get to Prisoner, <laughs> it's got to be pretty dangerous. It's actually Tempest is found in the jungle over there. So another... Yep. Cthulhu Font's following him. Mm -hmm. Again, they chose to run the... They chose to pick up that Tempest jungle. With the final pick here, or the fourth pick it was, but still, knowing that they were going up against Cthulhu. You are right, though. I mean, that, but that's the risk, isn't it? That it could be a suicide, but it also could be a jungler. And it ended up being the jungle Cthulhu font, so be able to box Only good out. thing. Yeah, and they, they kind of made the decision for them. When they picked Tempest, they said, okay, well, I guess we'll, we'll jungle on Cthulhu font. Yeah. So it was probably not the, the best choice. But the only shining light they have right now is that they've killed Dr. Pulsar twice and his GPM is only 295. Yeah. Swiftblade's definitely winning that lane up top. Yeah, that's Swiftblade back-to-back -back games now. Just on, yeah, when both both teams have managed to do run a very effective Suicide Swiftblade. Uh, this one's more of a Gweefix actually is getting some very good farm as you're pointing out there. Or last time was more just good job staying alive and also harassing the other carry, but um, Fix does have the Iron Shield, the Ghost Marchers, another 400 gold or so saved up. Let's see what he's able to make with that. Bottom lane, Magnus, he's going to go on a rally here, but actually he's just going to run away. So I'm not going to get much out of that there. But, yeah, uh, Magnus, not safe down there. Rally's six any minute, and then that's pretty much a kill. At least he got an Invis bottled. Yeah. I don't know if... I want, how long does a stun last for if I'm compelled? It's 1.75 seconds. And the channel has one second. Yeah, it would be pretty close. He has, so he has a combo here. He had to run up, though, but it doesn't matter. He gets the kill. Magmus did not have his Lava Surge. If he had it up, he probably would have been able to use it right away. Yeah. But like, if, you land, if you land the Compel um, to where you're, you're facing the right way and you could just you don't have to like walk up, I'm pretty sure there's no way you're going to dodge it. The stun is like long enough. But but in a case like that, that's hard to do. I mean, in a case like we saw right yeah. there, he had to turn around and run up to him a little bit before he got it off. So, yeah, the Lava Surge probably would have saved him there. Yeah. But I guess Magmus thought he'd be aggressive because he popped the Invis after his Lava Surge. It's just Rally already knew where he was. You see right there, Quincy confirming as well. Sync Esports did just, did just officially take out Solar Club. So, congratulations to them. They'll face the winner of this series here. Right now, Team Who up one game to nothing. And, of course, that'll be taking place tomorrow, guys. And what is the semifinals here? The Dream Act qualifiers number two. So you got the middle lane again. Prisoner, he's, he hasn't really been going for – okay, as I say that, <laughs> he goes for right there, but just that range. Maybe he has been going for more than I give him credit for. I haven't necessarily been watching the whole time, but – no, um, 4% hero damage. He's yeah. strictly just been focusing on creep farm. So maybe not. But at the same time, Puppet Master has been sitting really far back and playing it very defensive. And I mean, you see his creep farm, 29 and 9, only 230 gold per minute. It's rising, but it's still pretty low. So. And they have to sacrifice a Pyromancer, too. And it's not really hindering Prisoner either. I don't think it's a good rotation. Yeah. Oh, Puppet Master, as I say that, he gets hooked in. Prisoner. Not putting the shackle on. He got hit by the puppet shell. The prisoner Ooh. ulti. Not going to be enough. Beautiful stop there from Panny. That dragon fire stun at least. But here comes Rally. Level 7. He's looking for a chance. Here comes Swiftblade and Tempest though. And Rally's like, wait a second. I'm going to get the hell on out of here. But no. Elemental Void. We're keeping his place. But there's a hook. Ready to go. Pulls them in. Rally's going to be fine for now. Well, prisoner can away the question. He doesn't have a capella up on Rally. Yeah, he is going to still fall. So despite the attempt there for Prisoner, did not work out. And in the flank, Moira, and those are just illusions. Just run again. So actually well played there overall by, by Team Disband. Yeah, they finally get a good kill. And it's onto a 3-0 and rally, so it's yeah. pretty good. That's going to slow him down a bit. So stop a streak. Yeah, who got that? Pee Wee. Actually, on Puppet Master. That's very necessary. Happened to get that streak stopper right there.
Yep. But unfortunately, at the cost of a 200 second cooldown for the elemental void. Now, Jim Carrey on Dr. Pulsar, I, I don't know if that was a misclick or if that's for later. Like, I could have sworn I just saw him purchase the pattern for Null Stone. And I'm pretty sure he still has it in a stash because it's the the gold's been sitting at the same since then. So I guess we should expect a Null Stone on him first item, hmm. which uh, not I much don't use. Know. Uh, it depends. Like if he he becomes focused, um, that prevents a couple of different abilities. Actually, yeah, I kind of like it if he goes Null Stone. Um, yeah, for the just the fact that the Puppet Master's on their team and it gives them a chance to react. Yeah. God, look at that Mora, man. The impact with the Shards of Heart got in. It comes the prison break, and it's going to be enough. That Puppet Show, though, Mora now is in trouble. As she takes a lot of damage. Swift slashes from Swift Blade. Prison, uh, prisoner, that is. He's trying to get away, but there's no way for him to. So, actually, Swift Blade will get credit for the kill in the end, at job. least a counter kill. Yeah, something out of it. But first kill is happening for the Hellborn team. On both Puppet and Pyromancer. So, but yeah, I mean, the Null Stone, you're right. The more I think about it, too, it uh, definitely seems like it could be a valuable pickup. But that means he's going that instead of maybe the Icon or the Lockdown tool. Rally in the meantime, by the way, he is speaking of Lockdown. There's plenty of it there between the four heroes. And now they're going to rotate again. They're going to send Puppet Master back down here now that he's a little bit better off. Yeah, this is really bad for who. I mean... It's 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 one thing to feed a couple kills early game, but like when you were doing great, you're up to three zero, and then you start dying. It's even more impactful uh, for the other team. So even though it's like eight to five, I'd say we're pretty much even at this point uh, in terms of like what the kills that they got were worth. Yeah, as uh, higher levels. Huh. Doctor, yeah, they left. Go ahead. Yeah, they left Doctor alone. I was about to say the same thing. He's gonna get free farm now. Well, that, but also. Uh, Quincy uh, pointing out there that apparently Doctor versus Puppet Match, that's when they happen to be only opposing teams. Doctor is actually nearly 70% win percentage against a Puppet Master here. Uh, in, the, in that specific match, obviously a lot of factors come into play, but interesting noting that there. You would think that Puppet Master would actually be good against a Doctor Repulsor with the crowd control. Yeah. If anything, but just happens to have the higher winner percentage in that matchup. Tempest, he's going to be found. By Prisoner, Prison Break comes out immediately, and that'll be a quick kill there. So good job roaming with that Veiled Rot. And it's not over just yet. In fact, Trample in the background pops the Obliterate. His teammates were kind of leaving him, though, because the went way too early right there. And now Prisoner is going to go down. The Eruption coming out from Mavis. Compel misses from Rally. He hits that Compel. That's a sure kill, but now he's in a bad spot. So even if he got the kill, he still would have been in a pretty bad spot right here in the Voodoo Puppet. Goes off, so worst case scenario there. Now, again, top tower, at least Doctor. It's free farm pushing it here. But his yeah, team is dying. He struggled early, too. But I think it's more, I, I mean, it sucks that his team just lost a huge fight, but he wouldn't really have had an impact anyways. I think he just needs to keep it up and keep farming here. Mm -hmm. Especially with that stat where a Puppet Master is going to lose to Dr. <laughs> Drunken, or Dr. Repulsor. Mm -hmm. Swift Blade, he's, oh my god, we didn't even talk about this. We fixed with the Elder Parasite <laughs> on Swift Blade. <laughs> um, but now, this is, see, Pee Wee actually did this recently. He went a portal key Elder Parasite on Swift Blade. Um, this time, Gwee fixed his planet, but it seems like the team mentality is the same. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking game. about Elder Parasite the other game, and I was going to say, like, the only heralds that's really acceptable on are Predator and, and maybe Swift Blade. Yeah. Because he doesn't eat the shrunken head, so. They agree here. As, oh, there's a find in the jungle. Tempest. He gets found out by Rally, but Rally's actually. What's. Oh, the puppet show. <laughs> <Puppeteer's> <laughs> a little, right. little uh, confused there for a second. It's like, why isn't he moving? Well, that's why. So the counter kill quickly takes place. So yeah, I mean Team Who they're they're being very mobile here, but for a hero that started off three zero and zero is now four four and one. <laughs> that's uh, that's definitely hurting a little bit for Rally. But Pris and Uri lands the hook on a Pyromancer, pops the ulti immediately, and that will be an easy kill on a Pandy there as a result. But the more illusion is going to get beat down as now. What happened jumped there? Into it. Arcane Vortex, yeah, he jumped into it and go down the ledge. Beautiful play. <laughs> That was huge. That's not often you see it used like that. 
No, because I, I don't think you know for sure where you're going to come out, right? No, you don't. It's He's random. just kind of praying that he gets put on the, <laughs> yeah. the upper half of it. Yeah, that's kind of funny, actually. Really impressive, though. Yeah. And that when things there. work out as you uh, you hope. Mm -hmm. um, Puppet but... Master not going for Shroud. You see that? He's building a Thunderclaw. That's also different. Yeah, Pee Wee, again, he's, he came back to the scene here recently. Uh, more so to try to qualify for DreamHack and, and Dead Eye Bounty League and everything and having some fun with that. So you kind of kind of wonder how much of this is just him just doing his own thing or all of a sudden it's not really studying up a whole lot on uh, how others do it. But <laughs> maybe it's a mix of the two, if anything. But Oh, Dr. Repulsor in the meantime. They've been sitting like this for a little bit here. There we go. He, shot the, he has no clue. He's going to stun it right there, and that's a quick death for Jim Kiryu. Nice use uphill mm -hmm. channeling that eruption. The hook is not in time, so good find there. Using the invis, middle lane. Also going to be going to rally once Oof. again. Man, three zero and zero to four five and one. He's so he's one five and one since he had that three zero zero start. Yeah, a rally is tricky because like when, especially when you're three zero and zero, you feel like you can kill anybody. You just got to find that one person. But Legion team's not going anywhere alone, so. Even if he tries to go into the middle lane and maybe get a pick off on a hero, he's met with a one versus three and just not able to to do what Rally does best. Yeah. Everybody else is kind of doing their own thing farming, so he can't really find a partner to team up and gank with. Maybe now that Cthulhu Font has the PK, they can start working together and make something happen. I think that's going to be important. Cthulhu Tempest too. is going to use the Veldra once again. They're not afraid to get the random hook coming out right there, hoping to catch somebody, but... It does not. Swift Blade was not even close to that at that point, and he is going to walk away before too much uh, too much happens up here. So he survives. But yeah, going back to the Thunderclaw real quickly. What what, what do you think about the Thunderclaw? I mean, what is your 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 reaction to? Mm, not in this game. Like I mean, maybe if you were up against a team with uh, extra squishy targets, but they're not. You got three strength heroes and uh, an evasive doctor. Maybe it helps his farm, but I don't think it's going to help him in team fights at all. Um, you already see vestments on two of the heroes just because there's a lot of magic damage coming out, so that's going to hurt him too. And I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. But it's an alternate route he's going to take, and I don't know. You know, he's going to build a whis Whispering Helm, which is already like, that's two items that are kind of predominantly used in farming. Do you really not need shroud. both? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's definitely definitely very greedy style here from Pee Wee coming out. Um, I will say attack speed obviously is good for Whiplash. Get more procs off of that is is the idea there. But yeah, it's definitely it's different and it is a greedier route, especially since also going back to the ultimate point that his assassin trap, which I don't even know if he's gonna go for it, which would be weird, right? I mean, you figure assassin trap's like a core on Puppet Master for getting kills with his Voodoo Puppet especially. Middle end in the meantime though, once again, Rally takes the stun. Now, they deny the tower on top of that and Rally is going to end up falling in the end as well as all five players. And guess what? We do see the portal key on Guifix here playing this way yes, played. Sir. So the classic, uh, as, I, as I like to go back to the classic Slicks build coming out here. I'm a fan. I like it. Especially since he's not that, yeah, again, they're not relying on him again to be the farming carry here. Instead, that's Puppet Master's job. So maybe that's what Puppet's thinking, if anything. They got a Elder Parasite Portal Key Swift Blade. <laughs> so let him be more of the earlier game carry, and he's just going to farm and eventually take over the late game. Yeah, true, true that. They initiate here in the middle lane. Dr. Repulsor follows it up on a Magnus as well. Big hook for Prisoner. The Prison Break also doing, to be doing plenty here. It pulls them in and down goes Puppet. Swift Blade. Swift Slash is all we got off in the last second. Prisoner goes down. The Arcane Vortex though. It'll stall some damage. Well played right there. What's going to happen when they come out? Though the Elemental Ooh. Void will happen. Swift Play stays alive. And however, the Shards of Harka Moira was just out of range of it. I believe if she was in the uh, in the ultimate tempest, maybe a different story, but it doesn't matter anyway. She gets cleaned up. A genocide double tap for Pinky Curdy at the end. What a big fight! Yep, everybody forgot finish. about Tempest. Yeah, and he picked up a portal key. And it was it was crucial there. So maybe that's going to be how they uh, they set up fights there. A fight though, I mean. 
That Chambers Oldman coming out of the Arctic Vortex, you know, maybe if you're on the same team, but being on the opposing team and still the synergy that it was able to have. Yeah, I had to double. Cool. I had to double take for a second because I was like, that was a beautiful setup by Myra. Yeah. Oh wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Other team. Other team. Yeah, I got the replay. Up. God, the fact that freaking uh, Swift Blade survived there. And then, yeah, the element of void. Yeah, it did not catch Moira. I was double checking that. If that got Moira, Swiftblade would have lived because what killed Swiftblade was the start of Harkon that she casted after she came out. So that's unfortunate, but. It's a game of inches. It is. So close. So, in the end, this, this Avatar, man, I I really got to talk to our guys about it because it seriously looks like double Prisoner damage. Has double damage right now. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> I know I brought that up before, too. And I, no, I, it totally does. Yeah. I it's... need to put that on my notes or something because, geez, that, it's, that's ridiculous. Like, it literally it's... looks like he's glowing blue right now. Just make it like a yellow electricity glow or something. Yeah. Just change the color on the hue. Like, well, th that goes back to one of those things that you can't blame the player, but I'm pretty sure that's why players would pick up the skin if they pick up the zero, because it's that benefit. You you kind of keep the other team maybe guessing a little bit. Wait, does he have a double damage? I mean, no, he really doesn't, but... <sighs> Anyways, um, speaking of him, he actually just got his portal key, so finally happening. Not well, sooner, but eh, 20 minutes in, not the worst portal key ever, but... Yeah, because like he got sooner. Chalice, Power Supply, Vestments... He's definitely not rushing it. Yeah. I wonder if Rally will get one, too. I hope, hopefully don't think he will. <laughs> well, again, his gold. He's, he's had trouble sustaining gold here at seven deaths. So. Oh, geez, that's going to be oh, a nice job splitting the farm right there. Um, he is getting closer now. Going to go to the top lane. They want to make a fight happen up here. Pyromancer, level 11, by the way. He still has haste for 10 seconds, so. Uh, trying to get away. There's the Haitian Rally. Runs in. They're going to catch Pyromancer in the background. Cthulhu Fun trying to keep them occupied, but could not do so. And actually, more also. Arcade Vortex? Ah, out of range. Yeah, can't get close enough. So. Yeah, he's, he's hella fast, and he's got a PK. Gets away right there. And meanwhile, Temp is pushing bottom, Puppet Master pushing middle. So everybody going to the top lane for Team Hue. So that's that's where it's a big no-no for them because they used a lot of TPs to do that. And now their middle and bottom are being pushed. So yep. they can't do much about it. And Smart with the SPN. Ooh, nice PK at the geez, last second. Yeah. That was not easy reaction time right there. They get the middle tower kill, and now they're even making the way just bottom. No, Puppet's just porting out. So, good heads up by Team Disband, obviously picking up on that info, too. Look at this support uh, Pyro now. He's probably going to have enough for a portal key or a tablet, whatever he decides to buy mm -hmm. in a few minutes here. So, Dr. Repulsor, that Null Stone pickup, 1,100 gold more saved up on him, but again, it wasn't Null Stone really the better option for him. He's going to be, he, oh man, is he going to Shrunken Head as well? I don't know about that. On top of it, it's. I feel like their damage output is. Yeah, they have no damage. Here. At least not, not anything remotely close to the type of damage that Legion team is going to be putting out. And you have a bunch of jump heroes, so like, Doctor Pulsar is very rarely going to be focused if the Hellborn team initiates the fights that they want. Yeah. I, I definitely don't agree. Maybe it's a basher. <laughs> Let's hope. What? One of those range carry bashers. Doctor seems like an ideal hero for that. <laughs> it would be better than a shrunken head. <laughs> That's when you know things are bad. <laughs> when a basher on a Doctor Bolster may arguably be better than a shrunken head. Um, they're going to clear up Ancients as a team right here. Even Doctor joins the party and is going to try to take a couple. I was, man, you might want to leave those for Rally, honestly. He needs that portal key. If he actually steals those, that's going to be a little interesting. No, okay. Well, they will get them. He's just helping softening them up. So uh, that's some good teamwork in the end. Um, Rally now does have enough for the portal key, which he should maybe pick up at the side shop. No, he just gets one from the home. And it's going to have it delivered instead. They're going to make their way to the bottom lane down here. Again, the tower's still up. They only got two tower kills so far. You see Team Disband is kind of playing it onto a dark map right now. Not many wards in general. I mean, they got a very aggressive ward aside up here, but that's it <laughs> right now. As far as vision goes, so need to get yeah. those wards up. It's true. They've got them on the heroes, so they're just waiting for the right moment to place them, I guess. But despite that, I mean, yeah, they pushed out tier two mid already. 
And it seems to be the same thing over and over again. Hellborn team's grouping up because that's how they're going to win a fight. They have huge AoE ults and synergy, that, and that's really the only way they're going to get a genocide is if they do it all in one shot. Yeah. But Legion team smart, split pushing at the same time, avoiding the fights, and that's their ticket to win. Yep. And look at this ward aside, MVP ward aside right there, just placed by Panny actually. It's going to give them all the ideas. Actually, more goes in, though. We'll catch maybe one. No! Pyromancer avoids it with that portal key. They were all collapsing, and now they're the ones getting collapsed. And Pyromancer even runs back in. Maybe a little too eager right there, but it is going to set this up. Sets the Elemental Foy comes out. So the bait comes out big time from Pyromancer, and they're going to clean them up. More in the background. She's going to fall. You see through the fun. He has that obliterate out, but he's being blocked out by the hero of Tempest. Going to go for the TP. That's not going to happen, though. It's going to be a double tap for Pee Wee. Four for, nut, four for one exchange, but very, very worth that one death right there. Yeah, I think Panny knew he was going to die there. But if it if it means setting up a Tempest ult that's going to genocide the enemy team, uh, he'll take that trade any day. Mm -hmm. As he did, and yeah. now here comes pushing a, uh, across the map, even. Yeah, Dr. Repulsor does go for the Shrunken Head. There's, it's inevitable now, so... I don't know. They definitely have a lack of damage. Even even if they landed, like, a Prisoner Ult, Cthulhu Funnel, and a Rally Seismic Slam on, like, three heroes, that's still barely going to be enough to win them the fight. Yeah. Mora's gonna maybe catch somebody here. She's got the shards. Will, will she Arcane Vortex? No, there's not anyone close enough. Oh, she doesn't even have it. Never mind. No cool. Yeah, she whiffed it last fight. Yeah. Let me check out the replay there on that one. Also, that's not what I think it said, Quincy, where. The, so the Shrunken Head and Null Stone combination, apparently. Uh, the win percentage drops a lot if the hero has the farm, like as compared to if they went other items with that certain farm. That's pretty crazy. It was something like 59% compared to like 80%. So, oh, back to the live action. Well, he didn't miss much. Magnus, he just got jumped right there and eventually killed off. But, yeah, I mean, that's the idea, though. A very, very defensive idea in the build there with a Null Stone into a Shrunken. There's very few heroes where I think that could actually work on legit. Like, Madman may be one that comes to mind, at least initially, but... Even that, it's still a stretch, so. Heroes of Nulpus win more than they lose, but that's because they have a lot of fun. Well, yeah, obviously, but comparatively was the point. It's in this game, too, where he's the, he's the main source of damage for his team. Yeah. So it's, it's really counterproductive to get those items. And you picked a, a bunch of heroes that are initiators, so they're going to be eating all the damage anyways. Dr. Bolzer is not going to be like the first one in there. But yeah. they do jump out of panty mid lane. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they get a free kill. But again, it gives information to the Legion team that's like, oh, they were doing Congor. But no, they're not doing Congor, actually. And they're really using a Pyromancer here, not the end of the world. So, however, they are going to go back to the Congor pit. And Team Disband not necessarily setting up to stop it. So, maybe that kill going to be more significant than I thought. And they are actually. Almost like they're just giving it up. Now, this is not a fast Congor killing team. In fact, Cthulhu fought. <laughs> he needs to be a little careful there. Oh, man. Are they actually going to have enough time to come defend this? It looks like it. That'd yeah. be really unfortunate because they're going to be super low and Tempest is ready. He's got a shrunken head oh and his ult's up. There, there we goes. go. Swift Blade jumps in. Congor is going to fall in the elemental void on top of that. Nobody has a token just yet. Nobody's picked it up. Who got it? I don't yeah, even Rally know. Rowley got it. Okay. Yeah, he he comes right it. back up. Eruption, though, from Adam is going to finish off Dr. Rowley's like, I got the token, guys. Don't worry. I'm back at base. And his whole team's dead. So, <laughs> the initiation there. The fact that they have that much time to react to it and finally go in. It shows. It's a testament to how little damage they have. Yeah. They have no problem. They got plenty of heroes to take the Congor to tank it. But uh, nobody's out putting any damage on this team. Uh, can't expect to win with no no damage output, and the the top four damage output heroes in the game all belong to the Legion side. Another just case of <laughs> it's just clear evidence that uh, you can't uh, build the way that they are, specifically on a hero like Doctor. Expect to come out on top, you know. Rally, no souls bulwark guy. I think it's definitely big key right now because you know Rally and Prisoner are both pure physical. Yeah, would definitely enhance from that, but unable and to get like it. He, he had. He had the room to farm, too, so it's not like he just got shut down and he has no items. They get a counter kill on the Jeez. Puppet Master. 
Yeah, he kind of went another way from his team, and that was, that was a little silly by Pee Wee, but minor victory in an overall huge battle here. So. Oh, yeah. And uh, right now it's still looking like Team Despan going to do their best to force that third game and in a very good spot to do so. But Team Who, of course, staying alive, but it just it, it'll be the same story. Where is the damage going to really come from? Unless they land just – Unless all five of dis Disband are just all in one spot and they get a jump from Rally and a Seismic Slam and a Prism Ray. I mean, if everything comes together, sure, that's fine, but that's not going to happen. You can't bank on that, obviously. So, Yeah, going to need all-in barbed armor strat on these tanky heroes. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's hard to say because even if they do get a, a pick-off onto, like, Puppet Master, uh, Swiftly does incredible farm as well, and everybody on the Legion team is over 300 gold per minute, really. So. Yeah, Pyromancer so is just, just plenty. It's just I don't see any really chance for them with the current items they chose. What is, so going back to this uh, this build here on Swift Blade, again, this is not a typical build with the Elder Parish or the Portal Key, but they've made it work now at least a couple of times here as Team Disband. And, and as a suicide hero, it, it also seems like it could be even extra. Because, again, you're not you're not playing that hard carry usually for your team. It's the case here too. Do you think that is, it is a little underrated? Maybe this idea could be popular, or do you get why we don't see it? I think with another core carry, it makes perfect sense. I mean – you're just you're just a battle swift blade, and your only job is to make sure that you secure the mid early and mid game, right? So a lot of times when p teams pick too many carries, they they have to avoid fights, and with a, with a hero like swift blade, you don't have to. And then he still can have an impact later game, mm -hmm. as you could always sell that Elder Parasite for something real. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I think it's it's if it, if it, if it's underrated. I mean, I think a lot of people understand how the, the Battle of Swift Blade works. Um, but probably not use as much. Well, yeah, so as it this style, right? Like, I love this because he's honestly going to prove to be a very strong initiator. And, and, and the fact that, w especially with the portal key, like, he can literally jump any hero he wants and go for a kill with a pop and the Swift Slashes on top of that. And, you know, you activate the Elder Parasite just before, too. I mean, it's just ridiculous the potential there. Of uh, how much quick damage you can put out. See, Panic gets a free kill, by the way. Uh, to, yeah, uh, it just makes him all the more versatile. Uh, I mean, you, you don't know what he's going to do yeah. at the start of a game. And uh, the more we pick this up, the more we're probably going to see Swift Blade bans because he's just so unpredictable. You see the roam continues here from Team Disband, clearing the the map, obviously. You got Doctor at the bottom lane, but he's going to have to get out of here pretty quickly. As he does, he's going to start TPing back, but this is now going to be the last outer tower. A shrunken head picked up on Prisoner. So once again, a case of what? Uh, it's understandable. I mean, the shrunkens are good, but you guys just aren't not putting out any really damage right now. And Yeah, you know, I mean, this, help with it. if any time you want, why not an Insanitarius? It's really good on the hero, and they need the damage, but I just don't think they're communicating well, or they're uh, adapting well. Really yeah, they're not aware of really how the game's progressing. Yeah, that's one of the key things we do talk about every now and then. Is you, you got to be willing to adapt. You can't coming into a game with the strategy is great and all, and you know an idea of what you want to do as far as builds, but if you're not adapting based on a couple of scenarios. Let's here we go with the jump in the middle lane. Puppet Master pops struck it right away though. So does Prisoner, of course, pulls them in. He's locking up Puppet Master pretty damn well. Cause the one's terrible, but there's the yellow button. It's gonna be stopped though by the Arcane Vortex. Puppet Master remains alive, however, in the back when everyone caught in that Arcane Vortex. So now Temp is kind of left by himself, but there's the Swift Slashes from Swift Play. Magnus tons back in with the eruption, doing plenty. Doctor's dead, Moira's dead. Down goes Prisoner. Buybacks happening, several of them for the Hellborn side. But now rallies up close side and he gets it off. As the Storm Spirit though on Swift Blade saved him. What a play by Magnus right there, right before he died to use it on Swift Blade, but it doesn't matter. Swift Blade does fall, and yeah. Tempest is the ultimate one to survive. So, I mean, Doctor and Cthulhu Font did buy back, however. It but took still. two buybacks, yeah. And there's no, they're not going to get anything but maybe a tier two. It's not like they can run. No, we got a genocide. Let's pick up a Congor. And you see, I don't know if you saw it, but Swift. Uh, Prisoner was going to get away, and then he, he hooked Swift Blade into himself. Swift Blade <laughs> was still spinning, and he just got... <laughs> Oops. He died. Yeah, not usually something you, you want to do, but it's caught there. No, I mean, but they, they got Puppet Master initially, and 
That was obviously what worked out for them the biggest, I think, in that fight. The Puppet Master really did not do a whole lot because of it. Yeah. Yeah, Puppet Master definitely got locked down. He had this shrunken defensively and then back out, like you said. So Yeah. But the in, in the end, it still took buyback. So even if you take Puppet Master out of the equation, there's still a lot of damage coming out. And How did they even kill Puppet Master? It was just... <laughs> um prisoner pretty much most of the time yeah, you got on a prison break what was it that killed him something oh, I misclicked there apparently uh, let me actually pull the I, I, I got the replay late so it might not be like the full thing but let me check the replay real quick here not too much going on yeah let me see if I can tell no he's already dead at this point so <laughs> never mind yeah not 100% sure what truly killed him in the end but yeah, I think Puppet I mean I think a prisoner did a lot of the damage to him though so yeah it might have been like the shackle, like ticked him down just enough or something like that. Yeah, and the shrunken head makes sense on prisoner, but not after the shrunken head on, on Doctor Repulsor. But who knows? I mean, maybe they hang in long enough where they can get more better items because that was a that was the first team fight we'd seen them take, even with buybacks in, in a while. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but that's that's the important thing, though. I mean, the, the buybacks were used, and again, especially on Doctor, so that's even more setback now to getting a potential damage increase item, such as the Hellflower, even the Sheep Stick here, for him. As Moira, that that's the real Moira. Real Myra? Okay. Yep, she did. Quick kill onto her. And Swift Blade, now a Firebrand even picked up as well. Just, just max move Geo's speed, thing. pretty much. Yeah. So he's got that to work with. Tempest, of course, has his combo. Post haste on top of that. Um, yeah, there's a couple ways to still stop. Obviously, obviously one of the Arcane Vortex is the big one, but as we saw in the last fight. Uh, I imagine though. he'll have a resto soon. The way he's farming. Yeah, I don't... I honestly think... That's that's interesting, because I, I, because of the Arcane Vortex and how long it stalls and everything, I almost want to say maybe getting a... Uh, sheep stick just might be better, but at the same time, I guess using an ultimate getting counter, but then using a second one as soon as they come out of the arcane vortex could be good too. Let's play getting caught out here. Yeah, well, get, get, by getting caught out, you mean pressing R and winning the game. Down goes yeah. prisoner, down goes rally, and a wow, double tap for Griefix there. Yes, he is. Rally went from full health to nothing in like one hit. Yeah, he got a geometer spin now and was able to split up and do work as we saw there. Now they yeah. push the top. Sounds like a game three to me. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been a, been in that pressure now for a little bit here. So team who though, maybe a last ditch effort to try to hold again. The middle's already completely cleared out. You got Swiftly jumping on a Moira on the background. I think she was intended to maybe go in there, but obviously that was stalled. And now with her dead too. You got uh, Doctor's pushing bottom, but Pyromancer is here. Oh boy. It just feels like when Dark Lady was trying to split push last game. Yeah. <laughs> as they lost their base. Meanwhile, the racks are dead. He's like, I got the secondary tower, and you're another set of racks are down. More uh -oh. cast Iro, the vortex, but. And she interrupts the TP on Doctor. <laughs> oh, that's huge. That is huge. So now Doctor, he has to fly back and be distracted by Pyramids this whole time. Pyramids is going to die, but again, he, he accomplished exactly what they wanted him to. And Doctor has minimal mana, so it's not like he can just fly back here. Cthulhu Fall lands a trample, but without Prisoner, or excuse me, without Doctor. Don't know about fighting this. There's the Elemental Void that they were looking for. One dead, two dead. Let's go for three. Cthulhu Fall's dead. GG, well played. Game two will go to D uh, Team Disband. And that means game number three is going to be happening now. So there we go. Both, go the teams. Both teams showed like they know how to win. And they know how to lose. Like, it was just so one-sided both times. Yeah. It really was. You're right. It definitely was. Yeah, Team Who played so well in the landing phase of the first game. But and even this game, honestly, this they, game, they were a pretty good yeah. start. But didn't work out. Anything else to add before we go to the break here? Uh, nope. That'll take care of it. All right. Well, game number three. And that's, that's what I got to add here. We got game number three coming up. And looking forward to that. So we'll see what takes place. Again, the final series of the day, guys. Moving on here, the DreamHack Qualifier number two. Winner of this gets the nice gift of playing Sync Esports. But worry about that later. Right now, get the victory here. 
And what a then delight. We'll worry about that tomorrow. I know, right? It's uh, something. Yeah, but don't think about that too much. Just win here and see what happens. Uh, anyways, game number three going to be happening, guys. Team Disband versus Team Who here on Hotcast. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back.